Hi, this is Eli Kranzberg, and welcome to this series on Analog Brass and Winds, the latest instrument from Output. Like its sister title, Analog Strings, it's not really about straight acoustic samples. The name's a bit misleading. It's about, in this case, taking expertly sampled brass and wind samples and then twisting them and mutating them into modern synth textures using Output's great modulation tools, envelope editing tools, and rhythm generating tools. So despite the name, this library is really more about synthesis than it is about pure, simple acoustic sample playback. Now, it ships with over 500 presets, and the last 17 are the closest that we're going to get to kind of these unaffected, natural-sounding samples. So if you're looking to start from scratch and start from simple presets, that's where to start. Here's an example of one of the ways that the samples are twisted and morphed. But we can get into the preset menu and go to the end where from about here on we'll get more natural sounding samples. So that's where you'll find the most natural sounding samples. Now, in this video, I want to give you a quick overview, a quick picture of the overall interface and how this instrument works before we dive into the individual sections. So each preset is comprised of two sound sources, also called layers. Now, we have the main page here, and this is where you'll be able to make quick changes to the instrument's mix. We can change the sound sources from the bottom here, where we can call up a palette of sound sources to choose from. and Controls for sound source one are on the left, and controls for sound source two are on the right here. Or again, we can call up a browser and change the sound source individually. And we have macro sliders which control different parameters on the different pages, so we can quickly change the sound from this main page. It's a great page to explore the presets and just explore what these do. We have access to the preset browser at the top of the page and the macro sliders and the edit mode here. And at the bottom, we have these sound source controls, and these remain constant on each of the pages. So it's the middle part that changes. Now, next, we have the edit page. And again, you'll see this remains constant. And here we can adjust the macro sliders from here. And we can still change the sound sources and adjust the tuning and the level control. And we can turn each one on or off individually, etc. And on the edit page here, we have, again, the controls for the first sound source here and the second sound source here. And we can adjust the amp envelope and the pitch envelope. We can turn the pitch envelope on or off optionally and some other controls. And there's an advanced page for key range and glide controls. We'll look at all this in more detail. And next we have the effects page. And here we can globally turn all the effects on or off with that power button. And here, again, we have layer-based effects for the first sound source here and the second sound source here. We click on the different effects and we can enable or disable them and then adjust their parameters based on which is selected. And we have global effects as well, which apply to the entire preset. Now, after that, we have the rhythm page. And here, each layer has two independent rhythm generators. And they're either LFO-based or step sequencer-based. So, for example, Here's the first layer, and we have the first rhythm generator there, and the second rhythm generator there, and we adjust which parameters we want to modulate and the amount with these sliders, and we choose between different LFO shapes over there, and we can also optionally use a step sequencer, and there's various patterns and controls that we'll go through in more detail. And these are duplicated on this side and on this side for the second layer, so the two different engines, and we optionally have what's called flux which is an additional rhythmic modulation engine, which allows us to modulate individual steps in the patterns. Again, we'll explore it all. So again, we can turn them all on or off there. We have an arpeggiator page for more motion, and I'll turn it on here, and we have separate arpeggiators for the first sound source and the second sound source. And as always, we have the macro sliders here. We can click on the name to enter a macro edit mode and exit there, and we can assign different parameters from here, or we go back to the main page, and here we have controls to edit the macros, and we, again, click there to exit. 
And there's a really robust MIDI learn system. We simply right click and we can assign external controllers and control almost any parameter in real time like that. So that's the big picture. Next video, we'll dive in and start looking at the individual elements in more detail.